Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make Alignment, Viper Diva, Slimo, Style of Hard, Melodic, Rave Techno. I'm going to be showing you guys some new stuff in this video, some different ways of approaching it that I haven't talked about before. As usual, you can get the full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, every single sound and loop, as well as the project file that you just heard in the intro is available at the top of the description on my Bandcamp for just $5. This really helps support me, so definitely go grab that if you guys like these videos. And let's dive in. So, right up here at the top, we're at 140 BPM, and the first thing is going to be the rumble kick. Now as you can hear, this cake's a little bit different, you know, it's a little bit of a different sort of like flavor to the cake, so to speak. A lot of times with these style of cakes, we're going for a more like, <coughs> like kind of boomy type of cake. This one's almost more of like a, like a clicky kick, right? So we've got that. But you can hear when you play that in the whole mix. It just hits a little bit differently, like that kick kind of cuts through in a different way. So I think this all goes to say basically like the style of kick you're going to use, it's not just like, oh, this is hard techno, so we use this kick. You know, try a lot of different things. Don't be afraid to experiment with different styles because just the sound of kick that you're using is going to change the groove of your track. So you can try a lot of different things and get a lot of different feels. <laughs> And you can also hear, I think this sounds a little bit cleaner, the track overall, than if we use like a more crunchy kick. But then, for the bass... So what's happening is it's a pretty standard rumble. We have that same exact kick, and what's happening is it's going through... So we have an arpeggiator on it, so that's doing 16th notes. Then we've got this really short reverb here. A utility converting it to mono. And then the amp, which you can see I turned the mids and highs and the presence down, so this actually helps to make it a bit more boomy and a little bit more rumbly. And then we just have a low pass filter. You can see this one, we're low passing it super low, like it's really just letting through the like deep low end there. And then we just have a compressor, which is side-chaining this to that main kick, which is going to be really important. With the rumble bass, if you miss this step, it might seem obvious if you know what you're doing, but if you're just figuring this out, if you miss this step, you can see that when I turn that side chain off, it's a lot more like messy and the kick kind of clashes with the rumble. And yeah, then we have the drums. Now you may say to yourself, well, isn't the kick technically a drum? It is. I don't really think of it in this group though, because the kick and the bass are kind of like their own like group, so to speak. Like because this is obviously very, very different frequency spectrum wise from this. So the way I would set up a track is you start with the kick and then the bass, because usually you're just making the bass using the kick that you already chose, and then this stuff comes on top of that. And I like to think of this just as its own thing. And you can see it's just four layers. So we have a nice crunchy clap. This is just one of mine. I've got some reverb, and then it's being distorted. And then high pass. The secret to this sound is, if you don't use the reverb, you can see it's a little bit weird. Right? Like, it's not got that same atmosphere and energy to it. But, the reverb, if you just put it on, like, a default setting, obviously it can be a little bit too much. So the reverb, especially if you're using, like, a heavy distortion, it's really only going to be at like 3% or something like that. Like 3, 4, 5%. Because the distortion is going to make that feel more like 20 or 30 or 40%. But yeah, it's a little tip I've learned. Because if you just like, even if we put this at like 10. Yeah, it's just a little bit too messy. 
Then we have our open hi hat, which is actually being layered with this hi hat. So you can see one for the punch, one for the like sizzle on top of it, and then you put them together, and you get one really fat hi hat. And the last percussion here is just this little ravey loop here. You know, one of those classic crunchy loops that you're hearing a lot in these tracks from like the 90s or the 2000s. Now the secret to this one is you can see I shortened it a little because this had like a second half to it so it was going. But this way we have it just doing that one corner note. And it kind of makes it a little bit more aggressive. And yeah, so you can see, the drums in the track are going to be pretty simple. Like, you could really, if you would just, like, know what you're doing, you can set this all up pretty quickly, right? It's not that hard. But then, underneath that, we have the synths. Yeah, so you can hear those. I haven't turned down that envelope for a second. But those, when you put them together, you can hear like. You know, that's essentially like everything else on top. And you put this on top of the drums, and it all works, right? But you have to get those drums really solid first. If you don't have solid drums, you can have the coolest melody, the coolest synth. It's not going to work. You really got to take your time. And get the drums right first, because it's techno at the end of the day. So, like, that, it has to have that solid foundation. And yeah, so then for the first sound, it's the bass synth. Which is actually a pretty simple riff. What it's doing is it's this. Right, just three notes. But what it does is it's jumping up to each note. You can see, like, a little bit late, like. We go da na 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 da na 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 right there rather than just having it jump straight up to the because you can see it's more impactful if it goes da na 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 and then I also did this little thing here where every single one of these at the start of every bar just jumps up an octave you know it kind of gives it a cool rhythm but then for the sound this one's made with wavetable and we can even play around. Like, if you wanted to, you can even put this down an octave. What I also like here. And then, yeah, so, it's just these two saw waves, you can see. They're detuned a pretty strong amount. And then, if you go into the matrix here, you can ignore that pitch. So, you can see, it's just pretty simple, right? We just have the unison on the classic. We've got a bit of echo. We have a bit of multiband distortion, where we're doing the lows. Mids and the highs all through their own distortion. So you can see, like, yeah, one's got a wave shaper, one's got an overdrive, and one's got a nice amp on it. And then I'll show you without this. And then with it, so it really makes a difference for the texture on this synth. Then we have an EQ, which is actually, you can see, cutting out all the lows and then just boosting the highs and mids a little bit. Because it's really, like, even though this is a bass, it's really in the mids and the highs, right? And then we just have this being sidechained to the kick. And then the last sound down here is the lead. So here's the melody on this one. It's actually... The reason why it has this kind of, like, uneasy, like, sort of dark feel to it is because we're basically breaking music theory because of this A here. So if you look at, like, the bass line, you can see the bass line goes root note, minor third, and then A, which is not technically in the G-sharp minor scale if we're in the key of G-sharp minor. And then if you look at the lead here, we're using G-sharp, so we're using the root note, we have this D sharp, which will be the fifth, 
and E, which would be the sixth. So, those all fit into the scale, but then you're adding in this A here. Which technically doesn't work, even though obviously, you know, it still sounds fine with those notes, especially like going from E to A is always going to sound good. But since you're adding in that A there, that's essentially what's giving it the more, like, uneasy... kind of dark techno thing there so yeah and then we resolve it we make sure to come back down to the G sharp at least once at the end there so that it always resolves and yeah and then this sound is made using wavetable you can see it's just two saw waves we got a bunch of detune there and then I have a low pass filter we've got the matrix you can see I've got an envelope on the filter frequency You can see, and then we just have this unison on the shimmer mode. So it's a little bit of a different setting. It makes it feel a little bit cooler, though. And you can even turn that up. And kind of get more of that, like, dark, evil sort of feel out of it. I think I will do that, actually. And yeah, that just gives you that, like, kind of, like, washed out sort of side wave feel. And then we've got a bit of echo and reverb giving it some space. I have this amp here, which here's without it. And then with it. So you can hear it just adds some nice crunch to the top end of the sound. And then the secret here is that we just blend it. It's only at 17%. So it's like a very little amount of the actual distortion but it's that tiny bit coming through and that's all you need and then we just have a compressor side chaining this to the kick and then finally i have an eq8 which is cutting out the low end and yeah that is it for the lead And yeah, so that is going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video is available right in the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much to everybody who goes and grabs a sample pack. You know, every single sale really helps keep me going. Plus, it's just $5 and you get this really awesome template to work with and make your own professional tracks that will hopefully get signed to the top labels or wherever you want them to be signed. So, thank you so much for the support, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.